Should action films like Furiosa strive for more realistic fight scenes or prioritize spectacle? What's your favorite action film? I'll tell you what's probably the most popular maybe of the last sort of decade or two is John Wick movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is trades on realism as far as I understand that. So here's what I'd say then. If you like John Wick, John Wick brought something new to the table. Like action as a genre mm -hmm. is very much crash bang wallop. Yep. That's that's literally what I said in when, when we go through the ranking. So what John Wick did was this kind of gun carter, where it was almost martial arts with guns. And also, I would add that John Wick has quite an interesting world. Like the whole idea of the weird secret society of a... But on the spectacle against realism. So, so I don't think that you have to have either a realistic or an unrealistic action sequence for a film to be good in that category. What's more important is that it... A good action film brings new elements. So you have certain action films which go really over the top and provide stupendous explosions and completely unrealistic sequences. But if they do it in a way that feels original, they'll get a lot more leeway. From you, and bear in mind I'm asking specifically you here. Specifically for me, I find that the action films I've enjoyed more are, are realistic ones. Okay. So I'm thinking, it's tough because maybe they're more martial arts films, but yeah. I really love The Raid. And what The Raid had, um, so a lot of Indonesian martial arts in it, but then the second one ups the stakes and it did have, like those are unrealistic sequences but they are grounded in the... They've, they've got a grounding of realism in that it's, the it's a martial art. The itself is the thing, isn't it? Yeah. I'm trying to think of, like, what's, like, a really cheesy, unrealistic action film? Well, so you could go as far Terminator, as Marvel. maybe. Yeah, Marvel's Marvel. very unrealistic so, action. It's like, you know... And action set pieces that I've liked maybe are more, are more typically realistic. Like, yeah. say, Lord of the Rings. Outside okay. of the, the orcs... Like yeah. the war elements of it, true. Much more interesting. With yeah, the... so that the stakes, the expectation on that, I enjoyed more than the yeah. end game final fight sequence, which seemed more of like everyone gets their own go. Loads of CGI, action. loads, loads of, CGI. of quips. Um, so maybe good action can be unrealistic or realistic, but it needs some sort of raising stakes and and making the suspense feel earned is really yeah. important yeah perhaps then perhaps it's more it can be unrealistic or realistic but it kind of has to be within a certain you wouldn't maybe want complete absolute realism where like you know one guy punches another and then it's kind of fight over and then you wouldn't want completely at the other extreme where it's just so spectacle based mm. that there's kind of no substance to it but as long as it's within a threshold of like it's it's realistic and spectacle enough then it's just down to the other elements so it's like are the stakes high enough is there like a good reason why we're having this you know i talked about in furiosa how i was really excited for that that fight where yeah. chris hemsworth's team right the dementus guy i think his name is yeah the, the teams had kind of set up this interesting political situation i was quite looking forward to that action then but the action the very famous action in furiosa where it's on that road mm. the like 15 minute fight sequence the where they're where they're battling for the the, the truck meant nothing to me because right. because it the, it just kind of felt like it came out of absolutely nowhere and it was spectacle alone right it was like let's just give you spectacle sure but like where are these guys come from like give, set this up just a little bit more we made this truck mm. last scene and introduced this guy last scene and now we're on the road fighting for it. And it's like, yeah. this is just spectacle for spectacle's sake. That's a fair point. I, I think that one, th maybe more than any other genre, action gets very tired very quickly. Yeah. You have to really... And, and what a lot of people struggle with, I think, is successful action films when they come out. Maybe, maybe the action isn't particularly... Um, original but it's the setting or the the circumstances and that's mm -hmm. why they're successful and then successful action films almost more than any genre will spawn lots of sequels and it, <laughs> they become very tired yeah. very quickly and so it's balancing the originality of maybe the action and the originality of the concept and realizing that if you do one and it, it lands whether it's completely unrealistic or, or way too realistic either or 
you'll find that the audience is only going to really ride with you for one, I, I think, yeah, before okay. before you have to really change it up and bring something new to the table. Yeah. Uh, what a lot of people will do is they'll say, here's your sequel. Let's say Alien. That's more of a horror, but the next films after it were action. So you had Alien and then Aliens, which is like yeah, a pretty basic, okay. okay, we're just going to... This is how much trouble we had with one alien. What if we had an army of aliens? <laughs> <laughs> and that's a really common like sequel yeah, yeah, idea yeah, yeah. for action where it's like you build up this this antagonist or this character that's almost undefeatable. You defeat them and then you're like, okay, what if we have 16 yeah, of them in okay. the next one? You have to ramp up the ridiculousness quite a lot to get a sequel to justify a sequel out of it and then it can quickly become way too ridiculous yeah for sure so i'll tell you a good action series that that i did like was the equalizer did you ever watch any of those i think i watched i don't know if i watched it all the way through the denzel washington yeah one. yeah but that that was that's a good example of one at the, quite far at the realism end of the equilibrium where it still isn't realistic like re, like really mm. you know even though it's very much uh these are ex-military guys with special skills with guns and planning yeah. and plotting and it's there's no you know no one's throwing exploding spears at each other mm. like in furiosa you could argue it's one of the more realistic action films but it has to be at least somewhat spectacle to be worth your time if it's yeah. completely realistic it you know, the raid, another one. These are all ones where like they're kind of on the realistic end of it, but to be good, you can't just have it to be completely realistic. It has to be a bit dumb. With Mad Max specifically, that's just its niche though, the whole I think as we were saying, it's such a saturated market action. And they're all they all pull from a lot of similar ideas. As with that as with any genre, all right. But maybe there's less room for or not there's less room for creativity but you have to explore your creativity in different ways. Yeah. And quite often, let's say the action itself, there's very little variation between the the scenes. Like it's one person punches another, one person shoots another. So how do you package it? That's, that's where you get your differentiation. And what George Miller has done and what the Mad Max series has done is, has said, okay, we're going to give you your action and we're going to package it as it's vehicular we're going to make it leather we're going to have yeah this is this is you got to buy into this and if you like this we're going to give yeah. you more of it and it's going to be yeah. it's going to be ridiculous it's going to be high octane and it, yeah whereas other films which which rely on kind of cars like fast and furious they, they've got more ridiculous but this is like post-apocalyptic yeah. ridiculous engine heavy I guess that's the appeal of it. Too. It's same with horror. Someone will have a really inventive idea for a villain. Freddy Krueger's, your Jason Voorhees, your Pinheads, you know. Silence of the Lambs guys. Yeah, Anthony Hopkins. No, not Anthony Hopkins. Hannibal Lecter, Hannibal played Lecter. by Anthony Hopkins. Yeah. But, you know, they'll be very um, creative villains made. Yeah. And then it's been a massive hit and you're like, okay, how how do we capitalize on it? And Almost across the board, they get very tired very quickly. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, and and they'll get tired, but they'll get sequels. They'll be bled dry. <laughs> like most horrors have make like a profit. ten. They must make a profit. That's the only way you can explain That's it. Because every Halloween, you can just be like, okay, there's a recurring market for it. You know. <sighs> anyway. Well, I tell you what, right? If you've listened this far, like and subscribe, Fred. I want to know which ones you prefer out of the Mad Max movies. So why don't you give us a little ranking? Sure thing, Jambo.